So we're looking at a Redivis RT95. Spoiler alert, two thumbs up. I like this radio. It can be set up to transmit on both ham and GMRS frequencies. I bought that 12 volt adapter to be able to plug it into any vehicle and easily move it from one vehicle to the next. With 25 watts, it works fine. So that's a non-issue. I'll put the link in the uh, description where I got that. But you can see here, you can very easily add frequencies. You can add uh, information for repeaters. You can, you can see here, you can easily add a, a channel to a uh, save it into memory. And so you have the, the vem memory mode and the VFO mode. Of course, you can toggle back and forth and it will monitor two frequencies at once. It will not do them simultaneously. So if one frequency, if they're talking, the, you, you know, you're not going to hear the other. But if you can see there, I can set the CTC tones very easily right here from the radio. I program this completely without the computer. I do not run um, Windows, so I can't run the, the software that comes with it, and I couldn't get it to connect with Chirp. But uh, you might have better luck with that. But in any event, it was very easy just to do everything right here. And by the way, when you're putting it in, in the memory, one step that I, I had to kind of figure out is once you get it to where you want it, you got to push and hold the P2 button to save it to that memory spot to actually lock it in. So just keep that in mind. So the radio is very easy to work with. Here I'm going to roll in a sample of the receive and transmit audio, and I think it sounds good. audio and transmitting to it using an HT handheld. I'm about a mile away testing one, two, three to see what the audio sounds like on receive. Okay, this is what the transmitted audio sounds like. This is what the transmitted audio sounds like from the Redivis. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Now here you can see me holding down the P1 button and the function button and then the power button and it boots into the test mode and then you take and you turn the channel see what I'm doing here you go to channel 43 and see where it says mode 02 you hold the push to talk button PTT button and then you turn the knob and I had already put it in, in mode 02 but that's the mode that allows you to do the um, normal ham frequencies and GMRS frequencies. So it makes it a very versatile ra radio. And then that's it. You, you're, you're, you're good to go. Now here you're seeing I went into the, I long pressed the function and I'm going into the menu here and you have various options. There's the beep. I adjusted how loud that is. The step, I adjusted that to 2.5K. You're probably going to want to do that on yours as well. And you can go through here and just make sure you've got all the settings the way you want them. And then you push the P3 to go back. Notice how the, the back is over there next to the P3. So it, it's really intuitive. Once you play with it just for a short time, even without the manual, I didn't glance at the man, manual one time. So it, it's a piece of cake. The other thing you want to do is band. You want to make it on a wide band as opposed to narrow. That's another setting that you're going to want to do. So again, once you get all these settings the way you want them, you're, you're good to go. And it didn't take me much time at all to do this. And you see some things, you turn the knob and then you push the knob in to execute. So, and you can see there when you push the function button, how the P1 through P6 buttons, the function that they do changes. Now, when you're saving a channel to, uh, to memory, you got to make sure the final step is that you push and hold to execute it into memory. Because I actually thought I was putting a channel in memory and then I didn't, the final step, I didn't push and hold the P2 button to lock it into memory. So just a few things like that you'll kind of pick up as you play with it. And there's the wide and narrow band setting. I always put mine on wide. Uh, maybe somebody can put in the comments section why you would want to use narrow. But anyway, I use wide on all mine. So now we're going to go through a whole bunch of photos of what you get, what the packaging looks like, what's included. I'm even going to do photos of every page of the manual 
so that if somebody doesn't have a manual and they can pause it, they might be able to pick some things up from this. So the overall, my overall opinion of this radio, I've had other Retivis items, and I think, especially for the price point, it's a very nice radio. It, it has a good feel to it. It has a good weight to it. Everything seems like it's going to last. Uh, these have been out for years, and I haven't heard really anybody having issues with them. I would make sure that you have a decent antenna hooked up to it and that your SWR is, is decent. And by the way, I use that. Um, I showed the photo in the beginning. I just bought a couple of uh, cigarette lighter plug adapters for it. And I just crimp that on and it works fine. This will work fine. Just plugged into the uh, cigarette lighter in your car and most cars because it's all, it's putting out 25 watts. It's kind of at the limit of what you would want to run off of a cigarette lighter. But this will do that. So again, versatility, right? If you need to move it from one car to another, if you've got a mag mount antenna that you can put on the roof, you could move this from one car to the other very easily. So let me know what you guys think. So far, my initial impressions, two big thumbs up. See my full blog post about GMRS and ham radios at areaguides.com slash GMRS. Okay, so I'm going to go through the step-by-step -step adding a frequency and then adding it to memory and setting it up uh, to, to hit a repeater. So here I'm entering in the frequency. You can see I'm in the VFO mode and you see down below it says DC-12 volts. So you want it to say that down at the bottom. You want the screen to look just like this. Then you push function and you see I pushed on the, the P5 button. That's for the CDT. And then I pushed until I got to the, the transmit code, which my repeater just requires a transmit code. In this case, you just saw I put it in there. And then you've got to go and you, do, you have to do the the offset. So I pushed on P2. And in this case, it says negative 0.6. So mine needs to be positive. So I need to cycle through. I need to cycle through again on that to turn it off and then turn it back. And then see it cycles to the plus. And then once I've got plus 0.6, I've got the correct offset. Now I've got everything in. And now I can push and hold. Again, you got your screen's got to look just like that. Push and hold P2 until it blinks. And you can see as soon as it gets blue, those, those spots are available. In this case, I wanted to put it in spot 52. So I put it in spot 52. And I push and hold P2 until that locks in. That's a very important step. If you don't do that, it's not going to lock in. I was talking to Brian about it this morning. And, you know, fortunately, it was too hot to actually do too much with it last year. Um, haven't gone and haven't gone out this year. But I'd be interested if there's any guidance or things of, of the counterpoise and any ways to calculate how to var vary it. Because that is always the problem that I had was getting it tapped the right place. And um, I got it for 20 meters and it's how to get it tapped. The one thing, if you do get a buddy stick guys, that it doesn't come with are, are pegs. Go to Walmart and buy some of the tent pegs. They sell these ones with the orange caps and a metal peg. And it really helps secure it a little bit better. So, but I do like it and it's nice and portable. Um, all I have for this round, I'm, if anybody has any suggestions, um, I am looking for a new mobile rig. I am buying a new car, but not getting rid of the old ones. I'm probably going to leave that one, which was an Anytone. What was it? Nine? No, not an Anytone. It was a TYT 9800D in there. But maybe get a different radio for the new car. Something with a detachable base. Um, just kind of so many options, I don't know what to choose. And don't necessarily want to spend thousand bucks for a radio for the car right away but just some options that i'll pass back to mike our net control uh, electrical tape at each one of them so i just will roll it out and when i get to that tape i'll just hook it over the plastic hook and that's, where, that's how i kind of did it i think it's a pretty close um, every time um so that's kind of what i just love experimenting the only thing i realized when i was doing that is you can't stand close to it you gotta like walk away from it like at least 10 feet away with the cable and the antenna analyzer because when you stay close to it, you, you affect it. So um, that's kind of a hard way. So thanks for watching, and please subscribe, and stay tuned for a whole bunch more radio, two-way radio, ham radio, GMRS radio videos coming up.